existence. What do you think that image is that you and I have been made in? To speak our world into existence, right? We're made in his image. He created the world with his mouth. If we're made in his image, that's the image you and I have been made in to create the world. Now, let me warn you, if you just took that one scripture or take what I said and you didn't have any other scriptures to back it up, you're on dangerous ground. James 3, 1 to 11 says, your tongue is like a rudder. Now, wait a minute. So I'm made in God's image? My tongue is what creates my world? Well, James says it's like a rudder. Proverbs 12, 6 says, it's my mouth that delivers me. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat its fruit. Do you begin to see how the scripture is all woven together? Jesus said in Matthew 15, 11, he said, it's not what, you, what goes into the mouth of a man that defiles him. It's what comes out. And so you and I begin to realize that, yes, my words do show what I believe. And so if you're saying you're walking by faith and, you're, and you have a loose tongue and speaking death and destruction, you're not walking by faith. You don't even know what faith is. Because faith is standing on the word of God. That's the only thing that you can stand on. If you say you have faith, you better be standing on the word of God. You're not standing on faith of what the doctor says. You're trusting in the doctor. The doctor is fallible, right? I am fallible. Every one of us. You, can't, you can trust me, but realize that there's a part that I could fail you. You could fail me. But God never fails. His word never fails. That's what came out earlier, Mark 13, 31. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. Isaiah, where's it, where's it at? He watches over his word to perform it. Who knows it? Jeremiah. Jo excuse me, Jeremiah, thank you. Just a test. <laughs> sure. Jeremiah what? One, one, one twelve? So he watches over his word to perform it. See, he's watching over his word. Now, if Psalm 103.20 says the angels move at the beckoning of his word, who's to speak his word? We are. So when you and I speak his word, we move the ministering spirits of God. Not only do we do that, but God begins to, his word carries the anointing with it. And so we begin to move in the anointing of God. Okay. So the concept of faith and words, this concept of faith and words is clearly demonstrated in receiving salvation. Now think about how simple this is. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that's the principle of faith. You believe, you confess. You believe, you confess. What happens if you believe and you confess? You get saved. It's done. It's done. That is the principle of the law of faith, okay? That if you will believe and you will declare it out of your mouth, you will possess the kingdom of God. It's not just salvation. It is healing. It is finances. It is everything that the word of God says that you and I can possess. 2 Corinthians 1.20, all the promises of God are yes and amen. Every one of them. So you and I need to be getting into the word of God to find out what those promises are, shouldn't we? And if you know the promises of God, what do you have to do? You agree with them, hide them in your heart, and then begin to speak them. See, the Father will begin to reveal to you how to possess the kingdom of God, how to walk in the promises of God. Okay, let's go to the first, uh, the first box under the, the big box. What pleases God? Yeah, the only thing that pleases God is faith. When you trust him, when you say, yes, God, I trust you in salvation, you know what happens immediately? So let me, let me draw this out for you.
Okay, so, hold on just a sec. Bear with me for just a moment. Okay, this is the way that the, that the Word of God, that faith works through the Word of God. So the Word of God is spoken. So Romans 6 through, or excuse me, Romans 10, 6 through 17. In there, it says, it's only through the Word of God that people are going to get saved. I'm paraphrasing. It says, only through the Word of God people are going to get saved. But how are they going to hear unless somebody goes, Right? Okay, but when they go, what happens? They speak the word of God. Now, once they speak the word of God, the word of God has to be either believed or not believed. If it's believed, you speak it. Think of salvation. Somebody spoke the truth of the word of God to you. You believed it in your head, in your mind. You began to speak it. What did you get? You received it, right? Now, let me ask you this, and be very honest with me. That day that you got saved, did you really feel like you got saved? Not. Yeah, some people do, and some people don't. Some people have a glorious experience. Other people just believe what God said, and so they get saved. But as they continue in the Word of God, they get truth. They get revelation. They get understanding. They start understanding who God is. They begin to understand that they were sinners. They may not even have realized it at this point. But what did they do? They believed. They spoke it. They spoke it. They received it. As they continued in the word of God, they grew. And that's what you and I have to do. So now, if I, if I hear the word of God and I do not believe it, I will not speak it and I do not receive. You say... Wow, is that true? Yeah, Hebrews 4 tells us that they received the same word that we did, but it wasn't mixed with faith. Therefore, it had no effect. Okay? Go to Hebrews 4 with me. Yes. Yes. You're going to speak that as well. Yep, that's right. I just found that. Yes. If you have, uh, yeah, if you have faith, faith in something other than the Word of God, you're going to speak that out as well. Yes, There's absolutely. The Either way, you're going to get what you speak. Yes. So look at uh, Hebrews 4. I'm going to start at verse 1. Therefore, let us fear... If while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short of it. See, it's possible you can come short of having the peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God in your life. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us just as they also did. But the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. Okay, now, you say, well, wait a minute. How does the word get united with faith? Let me tell you how it does. When you believe, a measure of faith comes. Romans 12, 3. When you say, yes, I believe, a measure of faith comes immediately. That's the mercy and grace of God. 
When you say, no, I don't believe that, you have no access to faith. Okay? Romans 12, 3 will not work for you unless you believe. Okay? Yes? Can someone who at one time who believes and then comes to the point to where they choose not to anymore? Thinking of the incident recently. Uh Uh-huh. That... They said they believed all along, but then at one point. So you're getting to my next to the last box. We're going to talk about that, okay? We're going to talk about what interrupts faith. Because there are things that interrupt your faith. You can believe, you can walk here, and then all at once dive down here. Why? And we'll talk about that. And Jesus addressed that with the parable of the soils, right? The cares of the world come in. The deceitfulness of riches. All of these things come in and they steal what? What do they steal? The Word of God. See, when they steal the Word of God, then you have no more faith. Because how does faith come? Romans 10, 17. Hearing by the Word of God. Are you getting it? Okay. So go to, go to Romans 12, 3. Let's take a look at that. For through the grace given to me, I say to every... Paul's talking here. Remember, Romans was written to Christians, to the believers... For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. Okay? There's a big debate in the, in the Christian world. Is it a measure of faith or is it the measure of faith? Okay? Guys, don't get caught up in this stuff. What they're saying is, does God, does God give uh, Chrissy more faith when she comes to God? When she believes, does God give her more faith than when I come to God? No, he doesn't. Why? Because we look at all the word together. Psalm 119, 160. It's the sum of God's word that's truth. God is no respecter of persons. And so he gives each man a measure of faith or the measure of faith. And so in order for you to believe... The faith is there for every man, woman, and child. It's whether you choose to believe it or not. You either choose to believe, you know what? So if I tell you that Jesus Christ died upon the cross, he gave his life as a living sacrifice so that your sins could be forgiven and that you could go to heaven, you either have a choice to say, I believe or I don't, right? The moment you say, I believe, faith comes. The gift of faith, not the, not the nine gifts, but a gift that God has given to every person who chooses to believe comes to you. And that's your measure of faith. Now, how does that measure of faith grow? It's through the word of God. And so now when that measure of faith comes, I speak in Jesus' name. I want salvation, right? I want to receive all that God has for me. And so I receive. Now, how am I going to grow that faith that came? Getting in the Word of God. Why do you think the enemy doesn't want believers to be in the Word of God? So their faith will not grow. So they will be defeated. And that's where you and I have got a job to do to help the church understand it's through the word of God that your faith will grow. It's through the word of God that you will overcome the devil. It's through the word of God that you will overcome the flesh. And there is no substitute to it. That's the only way. That's why you go back here that what we had up on the board earlier. The only true faith you can have in this life is the word of God, is in the word of God. You can put trust in man. Even the word tells us to be careful about that. 
But the only true faith that you can put in any individual is in the Word of God. Okay? All right. Does this help? Okay. Let's go back to the, to the diagram. <clears throat> so what pleases God? Faith. Hebrews eleven six. without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Genesis 15, 6 talks about Abraham. That Abraham was pleasing to God because he did what? He believed him. He just believed God. Guess what? When you, the word of God came to you and you just believe him, God's pleased with you. He wants to reward you. And it's true not only with salvation, it's true with healing. When Chrissy came to me this morning and said, hey, would you pray for me? See, she's doing it according to the word of God. God's saying, thank you. Thank you for following my word. I set up the plan. Now follow my word. And when you follow his word, you will get the results of his word. If you don't follow his word, he still loves you. But you won't have the results of the word. You will have the results of trusting in man, the other side. See, that's, are you willing to trade? Are you willing to say, you know what? I'm not going to trust God. I'm just going to trust man this time. You can. And you might have a good outcome. Yeah, it's, it, God's not mad at you. You can do either one, but realize the outcomes are different, right? That's what he wants you and me to understand. He wants your outcome to be good, and the only way it's going to be good is if you and I will trust him at his word. Take him at his word and do it. Okay, so uh, Galatians 3, 6, still in the second box here, uh, first First one to the left under the big box. So Genesis 15, 6, God talks about Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was accounted as righteousness. Galatians 3, 6 is a, is a, and James 2, 30, uh, 23, it's the same. They're talking about Abraham. That Abraham was called the friend of God because he just believed what God said. And that's what God is asking us to do. Just believe me. You don't have to understand every detail. All you need to do is say, yes, Lord, I believe. Well, I wonder how, you know, I, I wonder what Jesus was thinking when he was on the cross. Well, I wonder, I wonder if it really means that, forget it. What does the word say? Believe, right? Trust him. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your steps. See, when you and I trust him at this point, Faith comes. There's something supernatural. It's the way God built it in. And something supernatural comes. The anointing of God comes. And we begin to say, yes, I begin to see. I'll never forget a young man that I led to the Lord. And uh, he had been in a mainline denomination. And um, he came and, and we were talking. We Actually, I grew up with part of his family. And he came to me. He knew of my relationship with God. And I shared the truth with him. He just believed. Immediately, he saw the hypocrisy in the denomination. He said, well, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Why? He received by faith the truth of the word of God. And it's that anointing of God that reveals truth to us helps us to see what is really real and what's not, what is fake, what is deception. Okay, same box, just as a grounder, because you and I will need this. And if you haven't memorized some of these scriptures, memorize them. God desires all people to know him. You will get people in the church that will tell you, well, those, you know, God plays favorites. No, <laughs> no he doesn't. He doesn't, thank you, Angela, he doesn't play favorites. He loves every one of us. Now, there are things that we can do to move the hand of God. Hebrews eleven six. 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. But that's not love. That's you and I moving the hand of God. It's walking by the principles of the word of God. So know that 1 Timothy 2, 4, that he desires for all men, women, children, to come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants every person to be saved. 
Romans 10, uh, 13. How, how are they going to hear unless somebody goes and tells them, right? Somebody's got to go tell them the truth of the Word of God. All right, let's go to the second box. Where does faith come from? We just talked about it. It comes from God. Romans 12, 3, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. For by grace have you been saved through faith. So you were, re you were saved through faith. God's anointing came. The moment you said yes, it moved the anointing of God. Faith came and you got saved. So by grace have you been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. And then Romans 12, 3 and 1 Timothy 1, 13 and 14. Let's actually just turn there. I want you to see what Paul says uh, to Timothy. Paul's talking about himself. He said, even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent aggressor, yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. So the faith and love is found in Christ Jesus. So the faith, the anointing, when you and I choose to believe the word of God, that's when the faith comes. And it comes through Jesus Christ because of what he has done upon the cross for you and me. Okay, let's go over to the uh, third box. How does faith grow? We've talked about this, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Psalm 119, 105 says, his word is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. Psalm 119, 130 says that it's the entrance of his word that gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple. John 14, 21 says, he who has my word and keeps it is the one who loves me. And, and my father will love him and we will come to him. And we will what? Manifest ourselves to him. And so that's how faith grows. When you see God's hand. So for example, let's take Dean's situation. So Dean has a broken foot. He, he comes into the fullness of of God. He he's, has a broken foot when he comes into the fullness of God. He hears that God heals. And so he heard the word of God spoken about healing. He believed in it. And because he believed, the anointing of God came, all right? And when the anointing of God came, he knew he was healed, right? And so immediately, he acted on it, yes. And so he, he had taken his boot off because the doctors told him to wear it for what, three months? Yeah, three months. And so he took his boot off he, and he started walking. He said he was going out the door. Don't let me put words in your mouth. But he's going out the door and he thought, well, maybe I should take my boot. And then he said, no, I won't. And he left his boot at home. You had a little pain as you went, the, went on your way, but he kept taking authority over it, kept speaking the word of God. And before long, he was 100% healed and delivered. All he did was use the process of faith. That's all he did. Guys, let me tell you, it's the same in every area of your life. I don't care what you need from God. Just find the word of God that you can stand on and stand on the word of God. The one that came out as we set before the Lord, Exodus 23, 25. He blesses our food and water. If we serve him, are you serving him? If you are, he blesses your food and water. He takes sickness and disease out of your midst. See, there's what the enemy tries to produce fear in us. And so you hear on the news, well, there's this, and you shouldn't be drinking that water. You shouldn't be doing that. That's not what my word says. My word says he cleanses my water and my food, right? So be very careful. See, you can put your trust in what man's telling you, or you can put your faith in what God says. Do you hear what I'm saying? See, don't be speaking out of both sides of your mouth. Don't tell me that you're trusting God and then over here, but you know what? I got I to gotta do this water. I got to buy the, the best water, right? The one that comes from the, the springs up in the mountain. Okay, now if God tells you to do it, do it, right? Don't misunderstand. God can tell you to do that. Okay, if you need to, do it. 
But be careful. You need to assess yourself. I need to assess myself. That if I'm saying I'm trusting God over here, and then yet I'm, my actions are not lining up over here, I really don't have faith, do I? I say I do, but I don't. Because my actions are opposite of what I'm telling and reading. Right? So it says, if I serve God, he blesses my food and water, and he takes sickness and disease out of my midst. So if sickness and disease comes, what do I do? I stand on the word of God. Father, thank you for taking sickness and disease out of my midst. And that's you and I walking by faith. We take the word of God and we walk by faith. We believe what God says. The anointing of God comes. I speak it. I receive it. And I move forward in declaring the word of God. Okay? Thoughts? Comments? Anyone? Are you tracking with me? Okay. Proverbs 4.18 it says that the path of the obedient gets brighter and brighter like the noonday sun. See, when you and I apply the word of God, when we stand upon the word of God, our path gets brighter and brighter like the noonday sun. And so stand upon the word of God. Do what he says. All right, let's go down to the next box. How is faith manifested? Romans 8, 6 to 10. I think this is important. Uh, turn, turn there with me. And guys, God doesn't lie to us. And if, you, if somebody says they have faith and their words don't line up, I'm sorry, they don't have faith. They have faith in the content. Yep, and, and they're deceived because the Scripture is very clear with us. Look at this. So Romans, um, what did I say? Actually, I, it's a misprint. It should, it should be um, Romans 10, 6 through 10. So, so go to Romans 10. Change that on your paper, if you will. That's a good one, too, Romans 8. It says the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. But, it, but the one we want to look at is Romans 10, 6 through 10. Okay, so look what it says. The righteousness based on faith speaks as follows. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we are preaching. You get it? That's the word of faith. It's in your mouth. The word of faith isn't in a statue. The word of faith is not in anything else but in your mouth. It isn't in a cross that you wear. Your faith is in the word of God. Right? Now, then he goes on to tell us. Look at, look at verse 9 and 10. He said that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So he gives us an example that it's in your mouth. You believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth. And that's how faith works. There is no other way that faith works. It only works that way. That's how God created the world. He spoke it into, into being. And it was. And it's the same for you and me. The Lord said for somebody in here, he just said, get the negativity out of your vocabulary. Get the negativity out of your vocabulary. I don't know who it's for, but get it out. Stop speaking negative. Speak the word of God. If you don't know what to speak, say, Father, your will be done. Now, what's his will? The word of God. So what you're saying is, Father, your word be done in my life, right? Your word be done in my life. And then when you do that, I guarantee the Holy Spirit will give you a scripture. He will share with you the truth of the word of God. You go look it up and you'll, it'll be your answer. I guarantee you. That's the way he works. All right, so let me go. I just did 9 and 10, didn't I? For with the heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, he confesses, resulting in salvation. See, Proverbs 25, 
2, I think it is. And it says, that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search out a matter. The, the wisdom of God is hidden in his word. The truth of God is hidden in his word. And so, but when you and I are diligent to search it out, the Father begins to put all the pieces together. Now, it's not really unlike anything upon earth. If you are learning, if, you're, if you want to be a computer uh, engineer, a, sci- a computer scientist, is it, is it all just going to come to you like that? Are you going to be able to go to Vanderbilt and go get in, in the computer science lab and everything's done? No. You're going to have to what? You're going to have to learn. You're going to have to study. And then you're going to have to put all the pieces together. It's the same way with the Word of God. For some reason, we as believers think we come to God <clears throat> and we have everything we need. We have everything we need, but we don't know everything. But as you and I get into the Word of God, then He begins to put all the pieces together. We begin to understand what it means to walk by faith. We begin to understand what it means to grow in our faith. See, it's very simple. But if you and I never search it out, you're never going to see it. And then if, if you hear these types of messages and you don't take it and you don't go to the Word yourself, it will quickly go away. You've got to embrace the Word of God. You've got to apply the Word of God. And when you do, I guarantee you, you'll get greater revelation, greater understanding of what it means to follow Him. Amen? Okay, let's go back to our paper. So how is faith manifested? Proverbs 18, 20, and 21. It says, A man's stomach is filled with the fruit of his mouth. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat its fruit. James, um, I didn't put James on this one, but uh, James 3, 1 to 11, we just talked about that earlier, that it's the rudder. It's the one. Whatever words you speak, that's where your ship's going. That's where your life's going. And so how is faith manifested? By the tongue. Proverbs 12, 6, that it's a man's mouth, a woman's mouth that delivers her. Luke 6, 45, Jesus said that when you look at a tree, does a bad tree produce good fruit? No. Does a good tree produce bad fruit? No. no. Every tree is known by the fruit that it produces. And then he goes on to talk about the heart of man. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And see, it's, it's the fruit tree. What's your fruit? What, what, what are you producing out of your mouth? James says it a little different way when he goes on in his discourse on the tongue. And, he's, and he says that, uh, can you get bitter water and sweet water out of the same faucet? No. He's saying that how can you produce bitter things out of your mouth and sweet things out of your mouth? That's what? Double-mindedness. What is, what is a double-minded man going to get from God? Nothing. Nothing. So do you see how it all just sort of weaves together? That the Father, we have to have control of our tongue. We must speak the word of God. As we speak the word of God, then our faith begins to grow. We begin to see the move of God. The angels move on our behalf. And so you begin to see how the kingdom of God works. Okay, Uh, Matthew 12. Turn, Turn there, let's read that whole passage. Matthew 12, 33 to 37. And it's the last verse in the passage that we really want to look at, but I'm going to read 33 to 37. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. Really what what the Father's saying here is what he says in Revelation. He says, I want you to either be hot or cold. Either make the tree good or make the tree bad. Don't be double-minded. Don't be riding on the fence. Get in line with my word is what he's telling his church. 34, you brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. The good man 
brings out of his good treasure what is good, and the evil man brings out of his evil treasure what is evil. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. You say, well, I don't speak any careless words. I think you need to calculate them. Okay? I need to calculate mine. I need to see, am I really declaring the word of God? Am I speaking the word of God? Do I have the law of kindness on my lips? Or do I just, you know, a, what's the old saying? The flibbering uh, idiot, you know? That are you just blabbing? No, don't blab. Learn to control your tongue. Speak what is right. Speak life. Speak the word of God. Now look what he says in 37. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Now, I, I've said this many times, and I truly believe this, that when each one of us stand before God, and you say, well, I didn't know that, Lord. And the Lord says, put that video in. And the video starts showing, and there you are sitting in the audience. And the camera goes on you, and he says, wait a minute, what, what are they saying here? In fact, you were the one that asked the question, right? So, you know, you and I are going to give an account of everything that we've done in this body. You are the temple of the living God. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Know you not that you're the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Therefore, honor and glorify God in your body. Amen? All right. Yes. The King James Version of Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. Amen. That we will eat the fruit of it. See, we don't like to hear that. See, that's what's a little scary, and we have to be careful how we tell the world this, but they're eating the fruit of what they've spoken. You and I today are eating the fruit of what we have spoken over our lives. Believe it or not, we are. I tell you the story. I told you the story about the friend of mine who, when he was in medical school, and he went over the symptoms of multiple sclerosis, and he kept saying, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that. Ten years later, he came down with it. I told you the story that is on, on, on YouTube and other places. Elvis, I'm going to die at the age of my mama. 42, she died. He died 42. So, see, you begin to see that there's power in the tongue, isn't there? There's power in the tongue. God doesn't, he doesn't lie. He means what he says. See, Proverbs 12, 6 said, the words of the wicked lie in wait for them. When you speak words, it's almost like those words are just lying there waiting for you to get there. But it says the mouth of the upright delivers them. Thank God. The mouth of the upright delivers them. Okay. Yes. Sure. So, so your friend declared that he had it, but then he had a friend who declared he was healed and he had multiple sclerosis. Yes. He was a, he was a quadriplegic. Yes. He was paralyzed because he kept quoting. He delivered himself. Proverbs twelve six. He kept quoting God's word. Yes. He was healed and he rose up and he had all his faculties functioning again. Yes. So the other person believed what God's word said. And his result was after he received, he got healed. Got out of the wheelchair, who had been in the wheelchair for many years, and he got out and was functional in doing what God had called him to do. Um, okay, so what interrupts faith? So if we look at Matthew 13, 1 to 23, and I want you to go there because I want you to mark it in your Bible. And maybe sometime this week, you can spend some time uh, going through, through this. And it's the parable of the soils. And if you remember, we did a teaching on this. It's been a while ago now. But there are four types of soils. There's, there's those who received the word. They heard the word, they received it, and they prospered. Because they believed it, they adhered to it, they did it. Uh, and then there are those who hear the word, they responded, they believed, they truly believed. But then the cares of the world came in and choked out the word. Let me put my translation on that. What happened was they didn't spend time in the Word of God. Because they, didn't, when, because they didn't spend time in the Word of God, they had no faith. 
What about the, the, see, Jesus shares this with us in many ways. The ten virgins. There were ten virgins. Five were wise, and they kept their lamps full. There were five that unwise, and what happened? Their lamps were half full, right? That's the church, guys. See, you and I, when we're in the Word of God, we're speaking the Word of God, your lamp is full. If you're not in the Word of God, your lamp can get low. Now, let me tell you something. This is a secret of faith. If you and I do not stay in the Word of God, your faith will dwindle. I don't care who you are. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Are you hearing me? See, if you stay out of the Word of God one day, you're not going to be so weak. But you stay two days, you're a little weaker. You stay three days, you're a little weaker. You stay four days, you're a little weaker. Eventually, you'll be so weak, you may not even get back to the Word of God. That's what the question came up earlier. So what happens to those people? They believe, but yet something happens down here. They didn't stay in the Word of God. That's the problem. See, let nothing, let nothing come between you and the Word of God. That is your sustenance. That is your bread. And so I don't care how you have to do it. Make sure you're in the Word of God daily. And make sure that you're hiding the Word of God in your heart. I don't care if it's one scripture per week or one scripture per month. Have a plan that at least you're getting the Word of God in you. And stand on the Word of God. You say, well, what scripture should I memorize? I don't know. Whatever you need right now, memorize that scripture. If you need scriptures on healing, then memorize those scriptures. If you need scriptures on uh, walking by faith, memorize 2 Corinthians 5, 7. I walk by faith and not sight. If you need scriptures on controlling your tongue, then memorize Proverbs 18.20 and 18.21, Proverbs 12.6. So whatever your scriptures, whatever your challenges are in life, that's what you need to hide in your heart right now because that's what's going to take you down if you don't do something about it, okay? All right, so the parable of the soils. So we see that people's faith is compromised when they allow the ways of the world to come in. And that's, that's what happens when you and I get out of the Word of God. And it really isn't. You can look at it two ways. So, I let the ways of the world come in, but why did I let the ways of the world come in? Because I wasn't in the Word. Do you hear me? See, if you'll stay in the Word, the ways of the world won't come in. It's when you choose to stay out of the Word that the ways of the world are going to come in. They get bigger, and they get more tempting. And so make sure you're in the Word. If there was one thing that I could give you, if I, if I could do anything for you, it would be to set up a time that you never missed your time in the Word of God, that you would be daily in the Word of God, because that's what's going to make you the most effective believer that God has ever had. That's why Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but if you'll, if you'll get in it, if you'll meditate in it day and night, and if you'll be careful to do according to all that's written in it, then you will be prosperous, and then you will have success. We're not interested in the prosperity and the success. We're interested in having a relationship with God. And when you have a relationship with God, He will lead you to success. He will lead you to prosperity, right? Mike. Just talking about the... Uh you know, staying in the Word, it's also what am I investing my time in when I'm not in the Word? What are the movies that I'm watching, things that I'm playing on, video yes. games? You know, I think it's, is it Matthew 6, 19 through 20? The eyes are the lamp of the body. If your eye is full of light, your whole body will be full of light. If your eyes are full of darkness, your whole body will be full of darkness. And how great is that darkness? Yes. So it's almost like whatever we watch and hear, it's sowing into us. Yes. It's the same way with the word. When I'm reading the word, it's sowing into my life. Amen. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And see, and, and, so, and so let me, let me add on to what Mike just said. I'm, I'm a firm believer. I've seen this over the years. If I will stay in the word of God, guess what will happen to my eyes? They'll, they'll be full of light. You follow me? Because the Holy Spirit of God will warn me, and he'll say, get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of this, 
And so that's why if you'll stay in the word of God, you will see like he sees. And then you'll be able to turn that TV off. You'll be able to do those things because you will not want any of that darkness in you. You'll want the light of God. Amen? All right. Um, what keeps faith strong? So the next to the last box. Again, it's what we just said, the Word of God. John eight thirty one and 32, it's only the Word of God that's going to set us free. Colossians 3, 1 to 3, set your mind on things above and not on things on this earth. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, put the armor of God on daily. And the, and the weapons you, uh, that you fight with, 2 Corinthians 10, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, it should be uh, 3 through 6, I don't know, 10, 13, yes, that's another typo. So 2 Corinthians 10 and then colon 3 through 6. Okay, And so, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And see, that's applicable to you and me every single day. If I'm praying for healing and, and I feel pain, I need to take authority over that pain and say, no, in Jesus' name, I'm healed, right? If I'm tempted with sin... I need to say no in Jesus' name. I choose not to follow that impulse, that, that temptation in Jesus' name. I, I'm going to direct my steps according to the word of God. Psalm 119, 101. Um, so who knows it? Anybody know it? Psalm 119, 101. Mike? I've restrained my foot. Yep. Yeah, I've restrained my foot from every evil way that I may keep your word, O God. See, and that goes along with Psalm 39, 1, right? I'm putting a guard over my mouth. So who's to put the guard over our mouth? We are. God's not going to do it. Oh, God, would you put a guard over my mouth? God says, no, I've given you authority. You do it, right? Oh, Lord, would you help me not to go there? To... No, I've told you, restrain your feet from every evil way, right? Do what I said. Just do what I said. Now, look, here's what happens. When you and I choose to believe the word and we start, we act upon the word, that's when the anointing comes. That's when you and I can expect the anointing of God to come and empower us, okay? So that I don't confuse anyone. Even though I have faith, Romans 12, 3, this is the initial believing here. But also, any time that I believe the word of God, when I agree with God, that's when the anointing comes. And the anointing helps to deliver me, or it actually delivers me. Um, and then Hebrews 5, what keeps faith strong? Hebrews 5, 11 to 14 and 6, 1, 6, 1 says, get on to maturity. Leave the elementary things behind. Get into the word of God. Be a doer of the word. Quit going around the mountain. Hebrews 5, 11 to 14 says that strong, uh, meat belongs to those who are mature, not those who are, who are weak, okay? Now, over to the last box to your left. Principle of the law of words for all people. God made all people in his image. Every one of them he gave the right to speak life or death. That's what you and I have to understand. That's why it's important for us to communicate that to the world when the opportunity arises. And that's what Proverbs 18, 21, Proverbs 12, 6. The answer is in the tongue. Every time that I have shared that with the world, and I've shared it many, multiple times in major meetings, in big meetings. And I've said, here's what Proverbs says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. It is amazing to me the reaction that happens. It's the first time for many people to hear that death and life are in the power of the tongue. They've never even thought about it. But what does the word of God do? It brings light, doesn't it? And so when you and I share the word of God with the world, the principles of the word of God, it brings light to them. And they begin to wake up. Another verse that always wakes people up is Proverbs 14, 30. It's a calm and undisturbed heart and mind that's the life and health of the body. But envy and jealousy rots the bones. That's where people, they begin to see that. Oh my gosh. So I need a calm and undisturbed heart and mind. Now, you know what you have the opportunity to do? Tell them how to get a calm and undisturbed heart and mind. And you can say, here's how it happened to me. 
You know, I used to be in fear. I used to be this way. I used to be that way. But I've trusted Jesus as my Savior. I've been getting into the Word of God. And now I have a common and disturbed heart and mind. Okay. The first set, the principle, the law of words for all people. Now look at the last uh, part of the box. The principle, the law of faith plus, plus words for all believers. When you and I take the law of faith, what God has set up for believers, when I believe his word, his anointing power comes upon me. Now I'm able to do anything. Nothing is impossible with me. Because God is on my side. God is leading me. That's why Jesus said in John 14, 12, that I go to be with the Father. And he said, you're going to do greater things than I did. Because you and I, if we agree with the word of God, that we have the power of God behind us. We have all of heaven fighting for us. And so realize that. So the first part, the principle, the law of words is for all people. But for those who choose to believe God, you have the power of faith working for you and the words that you speak. Because what words are you speaking now? Life. Life. Life, the word of God, right? And when you do, there's nothing impossible for you. However, there's one thing you have to realize, Ephesians 6.12, or excuse me, Hebrews 6.12. And it says that they obtain the promises of God through faith and patience. Faith and patience. So you and I obtain the promises of God through faith and patience. Faith, we speak and declare the word. Patience, we wait for it to come to pass, right? And while you're waiting, what do you speak? Life, the word of God. Speak the word of God. And then you and I will possess the kingdom of heaven. Amen? All right, is this helpful? All right. I want two people. Tell me what you're taking home today. Tell me about something that you got revelation on or that you're taking home, that you're going to practice. Anyone? And I know you need time to digest it. And, and, and I, don't put this thing in a drawer and leave it. Get this out. Look at the scriptures. Let the Holy Spirit bring truth and revelation to you. But what really speaks to you today about the law of faith? You get the mic. Well, it's pretty academic to me, but um, for some here, maybe not. But whatever you focus on, I like the opposites, as you know. Uh, you focus on, if you focus on the Word of God, that is exactly what's going to come out of your mouth. If you, if you, the majority of your time is spent in that. If you focus on circumstances, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. Yeah. And the law works both ways. Because yeah. that's, that's Romans, I believe, 8. The law of the spirit of life has set me free oh, from yeah. the law of sin and death. So yes. whatever you focus on is going to come right out of your mouth. You're going to get what you speak. Amen. And you reminded me that, and I've shared this story before, that when I sold books my first summer, and I wasn't a believer, um, and uh, I was in this person's house, and um, she found out I was selling Bibles, and she said, um, oh, I love to read my Bible all the time. I just, I keep it beside my bed. I just read it all the time. I just read it all the time. I just read it all the time. Johnny, go back and get Mama's favorite book that she loves to read. Little Johnny's about five. Johnny comes back with the Sears and Roebuck catalog. <laughs> what do you think little Johnny believed Mama loved to read? Okay, she could be deceiving herself. All I'm saying is this. We, we have the potential to deceive ourselves, right? Well, I'm in the Word of God all the time. Well, I'm reading the Word of God. Well, I'm memorizing the Word of God. No, make sure you are. Make sure that the, you're hiding the Word of God in your heart because if you don't, you're not going to be the person that God's called you to be. Yeah. Joe, looking at that video, and this is what I got. When the centurion showed up, and he knew it. all these people were there, and this is a man of huge authority, and people respect him, and he can put people to life, he can put them to death. But he humbled himself in front of all these people to a Jewish citizen, I'm saying Jesus is a citizen, and, and this, 
this person that he humbled himself to, according to the Romans, is belittled. The Romans, the Jews are below the Romans. And, but he humbled himself. And, and he recognized that this, this man named Jesus has authority. And so, therefore, he relinquished his authority. Praise the Lord. He, he humbled himself. And then he just told Jesus, he says, who is the word, you just speak the word. I don't have to see. This will happen Amen. because, you know, you have all authority. And, and he did. And so with the lesson today, what I took from it was you don't have to know everything. You don't have to see everything. You don't have to be like that person. And you don't have to make that person be like you. All you have to do is just take your time to be patient, rely on the word, wait on God, and, you know, and uh, whatever God said will be done. Amen. That's right. And the centurion, he heard the word of God. He knew the word of God. He knew what Jesus was doing. He was going about healing, right? And so he went to Jesus. He believed what Jesus said. He even said, and Jesus said, I've never seen such great faith in all of Israel because he said, I, you don't have to come to me. Just speak the word. And he understood he was a man under authority, but he just, he followed this right here. And, what he, and that's what he received. He could, have said, he could have said, no, I don't, I don't believe that, right? But he didn't. If you look at all of the healings in the Bible, if you look at the woman with the issue of blood, she used the same principle right here. She walked by faith. She said, if I could touch the hem of his garment. And she did, and she got healed. And it's the same. What, so there's two principles there, the law of words and the law of faith, right? Realize that, the law of words, law of faith. And so if you say you're walking in the law of faith and your words aren't lining up, you got to change something. Either change your faith or change your words, one or the other, right? And remember, God loves you no matter what. He loves you no matter what because he doesn't want you to be double-minded because when you're double-minded, you'll receive nothing from God. But if you're single-minded in the world, you'll get some things from the world. If you're single-minded with God, you'll get the things of God. See, that's the mercy and grace of God again. He wants us to be, you know, choose which way you want to go. You want to, you want to be hot, you want to be cold. You want to be left, you want to be right. You know, do whatever, but what, follow what is, it, hopefully you'll follow the word of God. Amen? Stand with me. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word truly is our lamp. It's our light. It's what gets us on the path through the Jesus Christ, your son. It's what keeps us on the path. It's what helps us to fight the battles on the path. It's what gives us the victory on the path. It is everything. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who works with us to teach us, to empower us, to comfort us, to minister to us. We thank you, Father. I thank you for each person here today, Father, and I thank you for those who've watched uh, by the internet. I thank you that your Holy Spirit is ministering to them. I thank you that your word has been taught. I thank you that your word is being adhered to. Your word is being embraced. And I bind up the power of the enemy that would try to steal it in Jesus' name. And I declare that the word that has been spoken today, that it will prosper. It will go forth and produce much fruit for the glory of God. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. We bind up every trick, every trap, every plan, every scheme of the enemy, and we call it thwarted. And we lose the plan and purpose of God. We lose the love of God, the peace of God, the holiness of God, the truth of God, the wisdom of God, the, Father, the favor of God. All that you are, Lord, we lose upon each one of our lives and upon your people around the world. We thank you that your church is growing, that it is thriving, that it is prospering for the glory of God. And, Father, we thank you for our president. We thank you for watching over him and protecting him and the leadership we thank you for uh, the, our governor, 
We thank you for everyone in leadership, Father, in this city, across the country. And Father, we thank you for giving them wisdom to know how to lead the people of God, to lead your people, to lead this country, Father, so that it is safe and it is sound, in Jesus' name. And we declare that no weapon formed against us will prosper, in Jesus' name, amen. Hug each other before you leave. <clears throat>